AEW stars are reportedly frustrated backstage. The real reason a match was cancelled, Cody Rhodes versus The Rock update, and more. I'm Luke Owen, Pinch Punch first of the month. This is the Wrestle Talk News. Support Wrestle Talk. I think it's fair to say that AEW has had a turbulent few years since 2022. That year started with the conclusion to arguably one of AEW's greatest storylines of all time with CM Punk versus MJF. But just a few months later, one half of that match got to an actual real life fight with the people in charge. Multiple people got suspended, all of them came back, and that same person got into another real life fight backstage and was fired for it. The general consensus from fans that a lot of this meant that AEW lost some of its magic. It didn't feel like the hot startup it was back in 2019. But 2024 has felt different. The consistent thing I see online about All Elite Wrestling is we're back or the feeling is back. Whatever that feeling is, fans have been enjoying the product more. And that excitement for AEW continues to grow with the arrival of Will Ospreay and the rumored debuts of Mercedes Monet and Kazuchika Okada. More on him in a bit. Even the Young Bucks themselves did an interview recently saying they're having fun again and hadn't been having fun in AEW for a while despite re-signing with the company last summer. But perhaps they're alone in having fun. At least, according to Brian Alvarez. Speaking on Wrestling Observer Live, Alvarez and Mike Sempervivi were discussing WWE's rather smart tactic of booking names like Cody Rhodes for shows that he's not typically booked for, like SmackDown. Because even if he doesn't work an angle on that show, he can wrestle the dark match after the show has finished. That way, WWE can sell tickets to people on the promise they'll see Cody Rhodes live even if he's not part of the program the rest of us see on TV. We'll also have more on that in a little bit. AEW doesn't currently do this, though Alvarez claims that many have suggested to it to Tony Khan and says that a lot of wrestlers show up for Dynamite shows on Wednesday with no idea on whether they'll actually be used on the show. He said, I don't want to compare this to WWE back in the day, but it is very much like that. And a lot of people are very frustrated. They don't find out what they're doing the Tuesday before Dynamite. Some people do because some matches are announced sometimes, but most people show up the day of the show and find out if they're doing anything or not. There's very little communication. I've been hearing about this for months. People are very frustrated. He then added, the days of long-term booking are gone. There appears to be two avenues of frustration according to Alvarez. One of those is that one that's in the quote, where talent are showing up not knowing what they're going to do and then find out the answer is not a lot. But the other avenue is that some talents show up and don't like the creative that they're given and get it changed to something they do want to do. And again, according to Alvarez, Tony Khan doesn't make them do it the way he wants it to be done. Both Alvarez and Dave Meltzer have previously talked about the likes of Andrade, El Idolo, Miro, and Malachi Black not wanting to do creative pitches given to them, going as far as to say that the reason Malachi Black wasn't in the Continental Classic is because he didn't want to lose any matches. However, it should be noted that they're still the only people that are saying this, while all other reports since the start of 2024 have been that the backstage morale in AEW has been much more improved. But do these reported issues tie into the reason why a pay-per-view match was cancelled? But before we get into that, it is Revolution this weekend where that match was supposed to take place, and you can get your predictions for the show in right now over at Wrestle League, where there's a whole lot of fun and prizes to be won. Here's how to sign up. Do you think you're a wrestling genius? Well, prove it, smart guy! Sign up to Wrestle League to compete with thousands of other people predicting every major wrestling event with a chance to win up to $250 of Amazon vouchers if you prove yourself to be the best. Join for free at WrestleTalk.com and make sure you click the email sign up to make sure you do not miss a show. Last week, AEW announced Meet Madness, which would have seen Wardlow take on Powerhouse Hobbs and Lance Archer with more names to be announced. However, just before this week's Dynamite, TK announced that match had been cancelled due to injuries and instead replaced it with an all-star scramble match with the winner getting a world title shot. That match, though, still includes Wardlow, Hobbs and Archer, leading to a lot of people wondering, 
Well, what happened here? Well, TK revealed himself on the AEW Revolution media call that the plan was to include Keith Lee and Miro into the match, which would have been Lee's first appearance since he was pulled at the last minute from World's End, and Miro's first appearance since he beat Andrade El Idolo at that same show. However, he notes both of them are currently injured, which is why he's put the match on ice for the moment, saying that he will do it another time. Dave Meltzer is reporting that Lee is currently suffering from bad knees, which has kept him out of the match, and Sean Ross Sapp on Fightful Select writes that Miro hasn't been at AEW shows of late. Interestingly, and perhaps quite hilariously, one of the qualifying matches for this all-star scramble, Matt Seidel vs Magnus, was actually taped last week where there were no stakes attached to it. The other qualifier between Brian Keith, Pentagon Jr. and Dante Martin was taped after this week's Dynamite. Also on that media call, Tony Khan said next week's Dynamite would feature a big bit of news, and now we know what that might be. Sean Rossap on Fightful Select reports that AEW are tentatively planning for Kazuchika Okada to be in the fold by next week's show. If that is the case, AEW would have three huge debuts in as many weeks, with Osprey making his official debut this week, Okada next week on the 6th, and Mercedes Monet the week after that on the 13th. Speaking of, Will Ospreay and Sean Rossap also reports that those we had spoken to don't expect Will Ospreay to remain aligned with Don Callis on AEW TV for long. But while there are plenty of debuts to come, QT Marshall returned to the company just a couple of months after originally leaving it. Marshall left AEW as he felt the promotion was moving too much into a sports oriented direction, and he wanted to be a main events wrestler and not just a producer. There was plenty of speculation online that he could be heading to WWE to be with his friend Cody Rhodes. And in an interview with Sports Kida, QT confirms that he did have talks with WWE about joining them and revealed the reason why he decided to go back to AEW. He said, I'm not going to go to WWE just to be a producer. I can do that at AEW where I can work one day a week and I'm number whatever in the company in the top 10. Whereas if I go to WWE, I start at the bottom and make less money and I'm on the road more. He said that, Really, the only perk is that I get to be with my friend Cody, and that while working for WWE would be a dream job, it's not my dream to be a producer for WWE. And according to Roderick Strong, QT Marshall might not be the only return we see soon. One of the AEW has lost its feeling arguments has been around the litany of injuries. Both MJF and Adam Cole, who were both supposed to be in the hot story coming out at the end of last year, are on the injured list along with the likes of Kenny Omega, Wheelie Yuta, Julia Hart, and as we discussed earlier, Keith Lee and Miro. And one name that has been missing for a while is Kyle O'Reilly, who hasn't wrestled for AEW since July of 2022. There's been lots of speculation on when O'Reilly could be back, and Roderick Strong has told WrestleZone, I think he'll be back sooner than later. I mean, hopefully before the summer. Moving away from AEW now, and Cody Rhodes has announced his frankly insane upcoming schedule ahead of WrestleMania 40. On top of doing his usual Raw and House Show appearances, Rhodes has also revealed that he'll be doing three episodes of SmackDown, the first one being tonight, the March 8th episode in Dallas, and the March 15th show in Memphis. While that makes sense, given that he's going to be facing SmackDown's Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40, it should also be noted that these three episodes of SmackDown coincide with the same episodes of SmackDown The Rock has announced himself for. But before we all get too excited, it also should be noted that Rhodes is often booked for SmackDown shows as a way to sell extra tickets, which is what we were talking about earlier. And while he doesn't feature on the TV show, he wrestles in the dark matches after the tapings. Though given how he is now the bloodline hunter, you would think he'd be on the same show that The Rock and Roman Reigns are on. And finally, to brighten your mood on a Friday, Dark Side of the Ring have shared a clip on Twitter of an interview they conducted with Haku, or Meng if you want to call him that, known as one of the scariest dudes in pro wrestling, where he sees the infamous Shockmaster debut for the first time. Bearing in mind the myths around Haku, including one where he once bit the nose off a dude for saying wrestling is fake, this is just wonderfully joyous. What do you think of what you just saw? Crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> 
It looked like he hit that thing and come down. <laughs> he, he, he was he was looking for the for the chemical tower. Swimming is looking for the chemical. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, I still love you. <laughs> that clip literally goes on for another 20 seconds. You should go and watch the full thing. But for some more laughs and giggles, why not check out this parts of unknown list that goes through the strangest kayfabe injuries in WWE history.